What's going on, growers? It's James Frigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to show you how to build a cedar raised bed and share with you an ancient Japanese technique we are using to greatly extend the life of the bed. Let's go! Me and Tuck are always trying to find new ways to get the most out of our garden. And while researching online how to make raised beds last longer, we came across an ancient technique known as Shosugi Ban, which is basically burning or charring wood to make it last longer. First, let's build our bed. To make it simple, we'll use three pieces of wood that are all the same length. Then what we'll do is we'll take one of these pieces of wood and cut it in half. These two pieces that we leave uncut equal size will make up the length of the bed and then the one piece that we cut in half will make up the width. My wood is exactly eight feet in length. So what I'll do for the piece that I will cut is I'm going to divide that by two. That'll give me four feet. Then I'm going to subtract one and a half inches to give me 46 and a half inches. And the reason I'm going to do this is that's the distance from my saw blade to the shoe of my circular saw. I need that measurement so that I could bump up a square up against the side of my blade. This way when I make my cut, I can bump it right against the square and get a good square cut. If you have a drop saw, you can disregard what I just showed you. But if you don't have a drop saw and you're using a circular saw and you're not that great at it, this is a really good and simple approach. Also, always remember to measure twice and cut once. If you want, you could build your bed just like this, but me and Tuck want our bed to be taller. So what we're going to do is the same thing that we just did two more times, then stack those on top of each other and that will make our bed much taller. Now, we're going to cut some additional pieces. These will act as braces to prevent the bed from bowing out. So I want these braces to be the same height as the bed. So what we'll do is stack three pieces up one against each other, get that measurement, which is about 16 and a half inches. And we're going to cut about 10 of these pieces because I want to put some of these braces at the corners of the bed as well, because this cedar wood is pretty thin. I finished cutting all my braces. I got five braces out of one piece of wood with just a little bit of scrap. That means it will just take me the two additional pieces of wood in order to cut all my braces. To char the wood, we're going to use a weed and garden torch and propane as our fuel. Make sure when you're turning on the propane tank that you do it slowly or the safety will prevent the propane from coming out. Then turn on the knob for the torch. When lighting the torch, you want to use a welding flint. My torch came with one. First, we will char the wood by setting the flame to the wood in each location for a few seconds until we get a nice char. Take your time with this and make sure you do it in a safe location. As you can see, the wood is charring really nicely. And if you notice some of the boards where they want to stay lit the flame, I just like to tap it with my foot and that seems to put the flame out. We want to make sure that we're getting the sides and the ends as well. Sometimes you'll notice that the ends take a little bit longer to char than the faces of the board. Then after we're finished charring the boards, what we want to do is grab a wire brush and brush off the outer char. We want to make sure when we're doing this that we go in the direction of the grain and we also don't want to push too hard. We're not trying to cut into the wood, we're just trying to remove that outer char. The first time I did this on the first board that I tried out, I used a brush with a handle because I thought it would be easier, but after doing it, I suggest just holding the brush in your hand. You have a lot more control this way. Look how the burning of the wood brings out the greens. I think it just looks so incredible. I love it. Next, after we're finished using the wire brush, we'll just knock off the charred remains and then grab a broom and use that to brush off the excess. We finished charring all of our wood and we brushed it off with a broom. Now, what I'm going to do is remove all the excess that I didn't get off with a broom. So to do that, I'm going to use a wet rag. If you want, you can use compressed air too, but I'm just going to use a wet rag. So we're just gonna wipe these all down. The wood is now cut, charred, and all cleaned off. Next, we're going to use a natural oil to help seal the wood so it lasts even longer. You could use raw linseed oil for this, but I have found something that I think is even better. This is called outdoor defense oil. This exterior oil is made of 100% pure tongue oil, pine oil, and zinc, and is suggested to be used for your raised garden beds. It says it's food safe and contact safe, so we think this will be a great option. You can use raw linseed oil if you want to. I just read that the raw linseed oil doesn't prevent mildew and mold, but this one does. 
so we think it might be an even better option than the linseed oil. Now, we will apply the oil to the wood and give it time to be absorbed and to sink into the wood, and any excess that doesn't get absorbed after 40 minutes, we'll just wipe that off. We'll do this same process a few times. All our preparation is complete, and now we can put our raised bed together. It's best to put your bed together on a level surface, so I'm going to build my raised bed on a raised bed that I've previously built because they're all level. I'm going to use this 90 degree clamp to hold the wood together while I connect it. I am going to be using two and a half inch screws to connect the boards together. I want to make sure that I'm pre-drilling before I use any of the screws. This will help prevent splitting. Now, I'm just gonna do the same thing I did right there for the rest of the bed. There we go, that one is finished. Now, I'm going to do the same thing two more times and then stack them on top of each other. Now, we will take the pieces we cut earlier and use these two on each corner to strengthen up the corners. So we'll put one this way and then we'll put another one over here which overlaps the sides. This will attach the whole bed together and really strengthen the whole thing. Plus it'll, it will give it a nice look because this wood is pretty thin. It's only about three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to use these clamps to hold it all together for me, just so I know that it's nice and aligned in the right location. I'm all lined up. I'm going to put a clamp at the bottom as well. I'm going to pre-drill and then put my screws in. I just want to make sure I don't hit the screws that I put in earlier. Now, I'm going to use one and a quarter inch screws to connect this together just like this. We're going to do the same thing over here. We want to make sure that these pieces right here overlap. There we go, that corner is all finished. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the three other corners. There we go, all my corner pieces are finished. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna measure the length of this and then get the center and then I'm gonna get that center piece and put in my center board. I think I'm gonna put it on the outside because I like the way it looks. And what I'm gonna do is take this clamp right here and I'm gonna clamp it down just to pull all my boards together. Then I'm just gonna clamp it on. There we go, last screw in. You can see how that helped to get rid of the gap. We're gonna do the same thing on the back side. There it is, the final screw, the bed is done. Now, all we have to do is just put it into place. Got the bed, feels nice and sturdy now. I'm just gonna set it in place, and then I'll just level it. And then after that, we'll be able to fill it with soil. There it is, the completed raised bed. All I have to do is just finish filling it with soil. I'm so happy with the way it came out. I mean, look how striking the color is. And the contrast between the sun bleach wood chips and the bed, I think it just looks incredible. For the bed, I use cedar that I got from Lowe's. I use cedar because in the old Japanese show Sugiban, they would use the Japanese red cedar. So this is basically the closest thing I could find to what they would use. And I read that you can use other woods like maple, oak, even pine. So I may try this process in the future with pine, but I think for now, cedar is the way to go. The issue with making a raised bed out of cedar is that the cedar wood is expensive. That's why I felt like if I was gonna build a bed out of cedar, that I wanted to make sure it would last a super long time. That's what really encouraged me to try this process out. I know cedar does well with the elements just as it is, but I think by adding another layer of protection that this bed will be able to pump out an insane amount of food. Not to mention how beautiful and striking it actually looks. So these cedar boards are one by sixes, at eight foot length. At Lowe's they costed $26, well $25.98 for one of them. I ended up using 11 of them. And if you want to make the same bed, that's how much it's gonna cost you. I also bought that uh, raised bed protection, the oil, that was another $50. So even though this bed isn't super cheap, it, I think it looks amazing. It should last a really long time. So I think it would be really fun to try out. So years from now, we'll be able to see how much longer this bed lasts than some of the other beds that I built out of just common lumber. Like I mentioned earlier, you could build a much cheaper version by just doing one layer and not having to use all the braces. And that could be a cheaper option, but I don't think it will look as nice as this when you have all the layers together with the pieces at the corners and the piece at the center. I just, I'm happy with the way it came out. And I like that it's not only beautiful, but it's super functional. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck had a blast out here. We're happy with the way the bed came out. We hope that you guys take the chance to build something like this. Not only does it look cool, it was a lot of fun to do. I think I had a little more fun than I should have burning the wood. Uh, overall, 
I think it looks great. We'll be able to grow a lot of food and that's really what the goal is. So we had a blast out here. Mia Tuck wanted to mention though, to check the merch out at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a sweatshirt, grab a t-shirt now that we're headed into spring. It's so close, we could taste it. We also wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Jack McCarthy. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing back here. The new beds and uh, you know everything we grow. Tuck and James will be back at you again real soon. We out.